Would you please stand for the reading of the word? This morning the scripture reading comes from the fifth chapter of James, verses 13 through 16. If any of you are suffering, they should pray. If any of you are happy, they should sing. If any of you are sick, they should call for the elders of the church, and the elders should pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. Prayer that comes from faith will heal the sick, for the Lord will restore them to health, and if they have sinned, they will be forgiven. For this reason, confess your sins to each other, and pray for each other, so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous person is powerful in what it can achieve. The word of God for the people of God. So, uh, it, it may be seem kind of ironic today that, that uh, we didn't uh, stop and have prayer requests and God sightings that we, that we normally have. You know, that today of all days, it might be the day that we would want to lift up those prayer requests and, and pray for healing for other folks. But we're going to have an opportunity to, to do that later as we move into our communion and, and service of healing. Now, one of the things that we're going to have the opportunity to do today is to, uh, uh, to ask for prayer requests and, and maybe even ask for some deep prayer requests. It's kind of interesting how James put it, isn't it? It's like that we confess our sins to each other. And so what I'm going to do is give everybody a chance right now to come up and confess their sins. If anybody wants to go. Okay, so, so here's how we're going to let that happen. Um, if, if there is anything that, that you know, you, you do want to confess, you know, feel free to, to, to write it down on a card. Now, that could be uh, something that, that maybe it's just nagging you. Maybe it's a, a physical ailment that's been bothering you for a while and you, and you want to have special prayer for that. Maybe it's, it's something emotional that's really been bothering you. Maybe it's something or somebody that you need to forgive and it's just, it's sitting deep inside of you and just kind of tearing you up. Jesus recognized that how important it was to kind of confess our sins to each other. We, have, uh, we had a little group earlier uh, that we were talking about this, sort of this notion and how we, you know, confess each other the things that are, that are kind of getting to us and kind of bothering us. And, and the reason that we do that is because we're family here, right? We're, we're family. We're here to build each other up, to lift each other up, to love each, on each other. And if we think about it, really, what is sin? We hear sin talked about a, a lot in the Bible, and, and we see that, you know, sometimes people are even referred to as sinners. We see that there are things that are labeled as sin, and so oftentimes we think sin is this really, really bad thing. But sin, if we think about it, is really just anything that se separates us from the deep and abiding love of God. It's, it's anything that separates us from, from love, that separates us from this, this relationship with God. And, and sometimes we may have our own pain. Sometimes we may have our own emotional challenges or relational challenges with other people that are, that are keeping us from experiencing that deep and abiding love of God. And so when Jesus said, I come to give you freedom, that's what he's talking about. When Jesus says, did you ever notice that how oftentimes somebody would come up and, and ask for forgiveness and Jesus would say, hey, your sins are forgiven. And they'd get up and walk or they could see or any number of things. Because Jesus recognized the importance of, of us as an entire being of how all of us are connected. So sometimes our, our medical profession, and, and, and we look at things, we, we kind of compartmentalize everything, don't we, these days? We've got body. Okay, what do we do? What's going on with the body? How do we solve that problem? Okay, what's going on with the mind? What's going on with the spirit? Well, you know, if you've got a spiritual issue, that's you go to church, right? 
But Jesus understood that, that all of this, that, that is, it's all wrapped into one. And, and Jesus didn't just heal physically, but he healed body, mind, and spirit. I think one of the ways that, that this is really uh, set forth through the Gospels is, is the story of the woman who had suffered for years and years, who had been hemorrhaging and, and just couldn't. She'd been to all the doctors. She'd been to everybody. And she was desperate. And she'd heard that there was a healer, that there was this rabbi in town that had been going around healing people. And somehow she kind of wormed her way and squirmed her way and elbowed her way and, and did whatever it took to get in there and just touch. Oh, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, right? If I can just get in there close enough to where I can touch him. Maybe that will do something. And so sure enough, Jesus, the power went from Jesus, or some power went from Jesus into her. He even, he even said that, right? It's like, I felt power go out of me. I felt this healing move in to somebody around me. And she was healed in body, mind, and spirit because Especially in, in those days when, when somebody was suffered, uh, suffered from some sort of illness, everybody wanted to stay away, right? And oftentimes they were even banished to the outskirts of town or out of the, the community. For they lived a lonely, experience, a lonely existence. They would live out on the edges of town. In fact, that's often where Jesus would bump into these people and would... would uh, heal people and we would read these stories of healing because he'd be coming into town and there were all the outcasts outside the gates and Jesus would stop and heal and give hope. And so when Jesus healed this woman who had been suffering for years and years and years, the gospel tells us it had been at least 12 years, that she had been struggling to find some relief. She hadn't experienced a deep love, this hope in life. But when Jesus touched her, she was immediately healed in body, mind, and spirit. And Jesus told her, he said, go in peace, go in wholeness, go in shalom, right? Because you've been healed. Some of you have, have heard me explain this before because when he says you've been healed, it's, it's interesting because the word that, that it's used in the Gospels, the sozo or sozo, depending on how you say the Greek word, actually means saved. So when Jesus said you've been saved, he recognized that she had been suffering, she had been going through troubles that were so bad that, that it had separated her from the love of her family, the love of her community, and maybe, maybe even the love of God. And Jesus says, you are saved. You are healed. And so when the, the church or, or challenges us to confess our sins before each other, what, G, what James is saying in our context is tell each other. Tell each other what's bugging you. Tell each other what's, what's keeping you from this, this love of God and love each other like you've never loved before. Lift each other up are the words that, that James uses. Lift each other up into new life, just as Jesus was lifted up into new life. Because Jesus promises new life here. 
Jesus promises new life eternally. And it begins here with God's kingdom on earth. It begins right here in our family as we lift each other up in encouraging prayer through anointing with oil and through sharing God's love with each other. And then, because we are family, because we are God's children, we can be healed. It might not be exactly the kind of healing that we're looking for, but we will be restored into God's peace and with God's hope. So today, when we come up, when we come up to receive communion, what we typically do is we typically invite people to, to come up to the altar and people will gather around the altar and, and receive communion and, and be in a time of prayer and reflection. It's how we normally do it. So we're going to do it that way again today, but then we're going to have a healing team that follows the communion team. And so we're going to ask if there's anything that you would like to confess. If there's anything you would like us to pray for. And if there's anything that you want to say, say it. If there's something that you desperately want to say, but just can't quite get it out of your lips. But you still want me to pray for you. Feel free to write it down on one of the little prayer cards that's in the pews and leave it up at the altar. I will collect them at the end of the service and, and pray for you. And, and even if you, uh, if, if you need me to, I will follow up with you and we'll, we'll get together and figure out the best way to give you healing in body, mind, and spirit so that you can be restored, so that you can feel that deep depth of God's love in your life, however that looks. Because we're family. God loves us, everyone. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Loving God, you desire that all would be restored by your healing grace. Forgive your church for the times when we have hurt others by omission or of right words or actions and forgive us for the times that we have intentionally hurt others, separating them from your restorative love. Heal our hearts. Heal our bodies. Heal our minds. Perfect us in your love so that we might be healed and your kingdom restored. Amen. And so today, I'm, uh, you, you may have noticed that there's a, a little insert. And so for those of us that, that typically do communion here, the, this is a little bit of a departure. So we do have an insert that, that we're going to use. And the reason I want to use this is that I think it's a really good one that uh, speaks to us uh, in our hurt. And speaks to us of, of healing as we come together around the table. When Jesus gathered around the table with oftentimes the last, the least, and the lost, and the outcasts, those that typically nobody would want to sit with, Jesus healed. Jesus healed them. He built loving relationships with them. He restored them. And so today, I want to make sure that we are restored as well. And so, a um, couple little things what we'll do is we'll uh, have the choir come first, and then, um, so we'll serve them, and then we'll have the ushers uh, bring the congregation up. And, um, and also, sometimes people like to leave a little... Uh, 
some money up at the altar uh, as, as a special offering. If you leave anything at the altar, it goes straight to our benevolent fund called the Good Samaritan Fund, which reaches out to the last, the least, and the lost in our community. And we're grateful to have that because it does reach a lot of people that desperately need it. Um, and then also when, uh, when we receive communion, again, everybody is welcome at Jesus' table, right? So if you're sitting in this congregation, you're welcome at Jesus' table. And if somebody wants to go out and collect people off the streets, they're welcome at Jesus' table too. I, I've got five minutes if anybody wants to go do that right now. Okay, so, but everybody is welcome at Jesus' table, right? So if you want to come to Jesus' table, we invite you to come. And also when we receive communion, we receive it, so we'll take, uh, we'll give you bread first, and then we also, then after you receive the bread with open hands and open heart, as we receive God's love, then we'll take the bread as the next person comes up and offer the blessing. We will dip the bread in the in the juice and then eat it. And if you and this is the method that we call intention. And if you forget and get really excited and eat the bread before dipping it in the juice, it's okay because God allowed do overs. Just say it. So I think that's all the things that I need to say before we get started. And so now I'm going to invite those that are uh, helping serve uh, communion and our uh, healers to please come up. And also, if I, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, our bread this morning is gluten-free, right, Shirley? Is that the... The little one. The little one. So we'll make sure that, that right, that he finally gets it right. So, um, so we do have a, a gluten-free alternative uh, if, uh, if you prefer a gluten-free alternative. So if you would please turn with me in your uh, bulletin insert. And let's join together. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God. With breathtaking beauty, you created this world, and continually offer, offer redemption and healing to every place of brokenness. You created us one family beyond all divisions, and you have given us a great gift in sharing the good news of your love. We are grateful that we take our place in a long line of faithful people, in declaring your praise. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we lift up our voices to join their unending hymn of praise. people to be transformed into a whole life. In spite of discouraging circumstances and constant challenges, he did not shrink back from the unique contributions he, as God's son, had to offer the world. He was faithful through every adversity, misunderstanding, and heartache. From the beginning of his public ministry, he called others to share in his ministry. Today, we give thanks that he has called us to follow him in example, teaching, and resurrection power. He has called us to be his witnesses to the ends of the earth and to make disciples of all. May the sharing of this meal seal us anew for our high calling. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me.
And when supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for me, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us.